Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. This is a continuation of the uh, shackle mount, spring shackle mount uh, video. In the last video, I uh, went ahead and I straightened the mount, but that was a pretty crude way of doing it. It got the job done, but uh, I spoke with uh, George again, and I spoke with Troy, George, and, and John, and also Nick chimed in, which I really appreciate that. Um, all of them, uh, excellent advice on what to do here. Nick um, suggested that I go deeper and, you know, see what's behind the, the, the sheet metal in the frame rails, and so did uh, George. Troy was in favor of that too. John sent me videos, as I said before, about all this, and uh, I, I feel he was on the same page as, you know, go a little further. I've come this far already, so why not do that little section? And that's the truth. When I ask uh, someone, I ask people for advice, it's no good for me to, to ask and they tell me what they think and I just do what I want. What's the point in asking? So I really do appreciate it and I do uh, follow, follow those, th those things. I mean, I can't follow everything, obviously, because sometimes it's a cost or whatever, but uh, stuff like this where there's no real cost to me to do, it's a pretty, it would be pretty negligent of me to not... Uh, take the advice of people that have a lot of experience with this stuff and I really want to thank everyone that was involved in those conversations it was very helpful now I feel very confident that this uh, these this hanger mount uh, and you'll see I'm only doing the one on the passenger side for now because this is where I'm working but I did straighten the left side but we'll go through all that in the video but uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that I do appreciate all that help. Um, sometimes you get stuck and you reach out and it's really comforting to know that you have people that you can reach out to. So thank you very much everyone and let's get into this video. Alright, so let's get started on this little project. Uh, I squared off an area that I want to take out for now. I'm trying to hold this is all really good metal in here. There's no issues whatsoever. It's solid. But I want to look inside the frame rail, like Nick mentioned, about the frame, being the frame rail. The frame rail up over will be fine. I don't see any issue there. I really don't think I'll find much down in here. But this is a good opportunity to crack it open because I have to take all this metal out here anyway. And right below this is where that mount is, shackle mount. And that'll give me full access to it. And actually, when I was pounding it down, I broke the spot welds on this anyway. So it's a good opportunity. I have to fix that. It's all pushed down. So I might as well cut it right over, take the flange right out, redo it. Over on this side, the same pattern. Uh, it looks, it may not look that way to you guys, that it's good, but it's, it's solid through the frame rail area. But I'm going to go do the same thing. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut it so I can check the frame rail inside and if it gets too hairy I'll continue on because there's repairs that need to be done. This whole area here will probably have to need a new piece in, when, once I get on this side but for now I need to get this shackle down, shackle mount down rather. And I already know that this area here is, is uh, shot as far as um, uh, metal, sheet metal. So. It had to be done anyhow, I just wasn't planning on doing it this early, but I don't know what I was waiting for because it doesn't matter. It's got to get done, it's got to get done. So, let me get these cut out, and we'll have a look inside and see what they look like. And we'll do this right. Well, as close as to right we can with the amount of time I want to spend on it. But uh, I feel it's worth doing. I want it, and uh, <clears throat> so that's that part of it. And... Before I, well, I'll cut those out and we'll take a peek in them because it's not going to matter because it's still supported to the, to the frame rail. Uh, it's not going to make any difference if I take the tin off the top because that's the, the sheet metal is not really holding much. It holds the frame rail together, but it doesn't hold much upward motion. But what I want to do with this car now, <clears throat> and Ron, I should include him when Ron said it uh, early on. Uh, he said about taking the axle out, all you have to do is to a few more bolts and you've got that axle out. And I should have done it then. It was just one of those jobs he just, I just didn't want to do. But it had to get done, so I don't know why I was dragging my feet on it. But we're going to do it now, Ron. 
It's gonna come out. This will be the day for that. So George sent me a lot of pictures and I'm going by where he mounted his and uh, let's get this done right. Got our top off of it. Now it's full of dirt, but it's overall in pretty good shape. But now I have access to these bolts. This frame rail looks good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little more metal off here just to open it up a little bit better. Um, I can't really see. Yeah, I can see in there. No, it's a bulkhead right there anyway. So that's as far back on the frame rail as I can go with that that much of my finger. That's it. So. It all looks good in there, but I'll get it all cleaned out and I'll get back to you once I get it vacuumed out and uh, blown down and cleaned up and we'll have a look at it again. Hang in there. And it looks pretty darn good in there. I know for you guys in the camera it probably looks rusty, but that's just a very light surface rust. It was dry in there. Of course, this car has been inside for a long time. But that's rock, rock solid. So now I can bend these flanges back up. I may take a, a little more of this metal off. I'm not sure yet. Mainly, I want to get these bolts out today too. So we know already know one bolt's broken. So now I can get heat on the bolts and I don't have to struggle, hopefully, with these two bolts if they come out easily. All right, I'm gonna move over there. We have this one. I'm gonna move over there and cut that one open and I'm gonna show it and I'll clean it up and see how it looks while we're doing this. All right, so let me move over there.
And you see this? This is separated here. This is supposed to be folded over and, and uh, welded to that. But the pressure, when it was pushed up over time as they were towing, I assume that's what happened, it separated that bracket. So this bracket needs some repairs. Uh, Rust-wise, it, it seems quite solid. These are very heavy. I don't know what gauge they are, but they may even be in the actual uh, fractional measurement. It's pretty heavy stuff. So that's good. It's not a waste of time. Now I can get these bolts out as well and get these spring shackles off. And uh, we can do this right. Now, down in the frame rail here, Get a good shot of the light. The frame rails are in good shape. You can see it's nice. And these look, and I talked to George about the galvanizing on these this particular car. It looks like a lot a lot of it was galvanized. And these look, the frame rails look like they may have been galvanized inside. Now, someone that has worked on these more than I have may know more about it. But to me, that either some kind of a coating or galvanizing on the frame rails. Let's see if we can get up in there. Yeah, so... I'm not too concerned about the frame rails in this car now. There's no guessing anymore. It's they're in good shape. So let's take a look in this one here because I I showed you the frame rails in the left side. <clears throat> let's do the right side and have a look. Sorry if I'm bouncing around a lot, but I'm trying to get in and uh, I can't really see because the light is there. We go. The light is kind of getting the best of me here. I don't know if I can get in there, but I'm pretty sure I'm good with some rust treatment in there. And I was gonna, the intent was to hit this with fluid film or uh, rust oil or the uh, rust check or something. Anyway, all through these areas. So that's done. I know what I'm facing here. Now I gotta heat these, get the rear shackles unhooked, and then go up underneath and check the condition of the front mounts on this. But either way, this baby's coming apart. All right, so let me get some of this stuff out of the way. I don't need any more, and we'll tackle a few things. I don't know how I'll bother filming. I'm gonna wait, just so you know, I won't drop this shackle back down until I get the, or shackle mount back down until I get the uh, spring off of it. There's no point in fighting the spring and all that stuff. I just take the springs out, and then I have lots of room to work and all that kind of jazz. All right. There we go, no problem whatsoever. A little map gas in the old yellow tank there. And uh, I gave them a good heating. Sprayed them down with some uh, deep creep, a little bit of lichamatazzi on them. And they started right away. So no issues with getting those bolts out. So I'm just leaving them right there for now. Uh, I did take a, the one bolt out that I could get out. These, the same thing over here. I didn't try this yet. I'll, I figure once I get the shackle off, I'll have a uh, room to weld a nut on the other end. If not, I'll bring it back up this way. That bolt's dropped down, but I'm holding it there until I get, until I get the axle out of her. But yeah, so she's coming along actually pretty good. Looking pretty good. So we're on the road to recovery with those spring mounts. All right, so now I have those uh, bolts loosened up, ready to come out. I have to re-support this, this rig. So I'm gonna bring get my uh, supports under here, the, the ones without, that aren't sitting on dollies, my uh, cribs rather. And those cribs up there, I need to move forward um, to the underneath the torque box area, both sides. And uh, then we'll start dropping that axle out. There she is. Back up on the trailer jacks. I've got the other two uh, wheel dollies under the torque boxes. And the jacks there just to support the uh, axle once I... So I'll, be, I'll probably take it out while I'm undoing the forward mounting. Um, got some brake lines to unhook. I'll just kind of zoom in on those. So the brake lines and the brake park brake cables. The park brake cables have been cut off already. 
they're not a big deal. The brake line, the rubber brake line, uh, I could just take it off. I mean, it's gonna be, it can be cut because it should be replaced anyhow. Well, there she is, got the rear diff out. It's a heavy sucker, that baby. <laughs> they made, they, they built this part strong, there's no doubt about that. Anyway, I'll just do a little recap. Shock nuts are three quarter, the U-bolt nuts are three quarter, but I ended up cutting one off anyway. They're not, you can't reuse them, or you really shouldn't. The, I looked at them, they look stretched. Um, but they may be good for other things, good steel in them. I'm a sucker for, for free steel. And I guess if it's a pinch, you could reuse them temporarily. And now, I'm just gonna crawl underneath there. Oh yeah, and the, the uh, brake lines, like I said, were already, uh, the, uh, well, the, the hydraulic brake line is brand new. I put it on when I got the car to move the car around. I don't know why I bothered, but I could've just blocked it off and it would've been fine. And what else is left? The shocks, I guess two shocks. So the rear, rear mounts here. It's pretty dark in here. Those are uh, 9 sixteenths head on them. I'm gonna go to the other side, just hold on. I'm gonna put the light up and I'll show you underneath here. <coughs> there we go. I got a little light on it. So here's the, uh, I'll lay down here a bit. There's the, uh, where the gas tank would sit. That's all original primer. There's pretty much no rust up in there. That's like brand new metal. So yeah, I got the park brake cables. I just snipped them off with a zip cut. Quick and easy. They're garbage anyway. So now, it's the, uh, the front mounts on both sides have to come off. I'll see what I can do with them. Like, looks like I have pretty good access to them. We'll see. They look to be three quarter, but I'm not. A, I'll find out in a minute. Oh yeah, and then of course I'll zip off the uh, shocked mounts and all that stuff. And I don't think that's going to take much. They look like a nine sixteenths. But yeah, this car is uh, it's a funny way it rusted. I still think the car was in uh, calcium chloride around the that got splashed up around the wheels and the wheel arches and stuff. And the rest was fine. I think it got they got mixed up in calcium chloride at some point, and then they parked the car, and it just continually rotted the car away in the areas that had calcium on it. Anyway, enough talk. Get these shocks off and springs out of the way and all that jazz. All right, she's all out. Springs, shocks, differential. It looks good. Brake lines. Fuel line, emergency park brake cables, a lot of dirt. Another five pounds of dirt. So let's uh, I'll give her a clean up and we'll go underneath and see what the condition of her is. All the mounts and everything like that. Yeah, look at the top of these uh, shock uh, mounts. Just like, like the day they were put in there, new. Well, not quite the day, <laughs> not quite that good, but they're in good shape. Sealed in, I guess. All right, there we are, up underneath of her. And this is inside of where the shocks were. Look, it's like brand new in there. That whole area, the, the uh, frame rail is really nice shape. I bent those when I was taking it off of the hangers. But you can see here where I took some of the, some of the undercoating off. It's like a brand new car under here. Same as up in this one. So, but yeah, she's good. It's a solid car in the center. The outer parts weren't so good, but the center's solid. One more convertible, I'm pretty sure will be saved. All right, that's it for showing this underneath part. Enough of that. But you can even see, oh, I, want, I should cover these mount areas too. So there's the mount area on the right. It's in good shape. And there's the mount area on the left, and that's in good shape. All the structure around it's good. So, yeah. Even the torque box on this side isn't bad. It needs some work, but it's a lot better than the right side was. Now that I've got the hole all 
cut out and I've got the, I rush treated all inside with the rust converter and I cleaned up these flanges and uh, getting ready now, I go underneath here, I'm going to weld up, weld up uh, a few of the spots that I feel are stress points. Clearly there's a stress point right there because it's cracked. So that all needs to be re-welded. So I think I'm going to cut that and weld it, get rid of that crack and then re-weld the hole. And then I'm going to re-weld the, I know they weren't done initially, but I'm going to put a bead of weld on all the spots. Like all these uh, folded spots and then right here. And uh, this one in here, you can't see it, but it's, it's in good shape in here. There's no cracking or anything. So, this push, this corner is pushed up a little, so I think I'm going to try to bring it back down. And you can see where the, the spring shackle actually pushed into that. But I can bush the, I can shim these if I need to, but I think that's going to be pretty good. Far better than it was, is it within a millimeter or two of the original? No. But I think if I weld all this and put maybe a couple of tacks of weld in here and on the edge and up in there, and then the other places, like I said, I think she'll be pretty strong. And probably I'll do a little bead here too. So that's the plan. So I'll dig the weld, bring the welder over, and I'll get at her. There now, I did a little reinforcing. I welded it all around. I welded up the corners. Put a couple of beads in. She's not super pretty. But I'm going to spray this all down with, once it cools off, I'll spray it all down with uh, rust... Uh, converter as well since I did the inside here I'm going to start priming this when it cools down a little bit um, doesn't matter too much as long as it's not doesn't burn the paint uh, a little heat on it dries it quicker so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to build a piece to go in here and weld it in there she is she's coated up with red oxide I even just dumped a bunch down in the frame rail and let it run run in and I brushed what I could I don't think I'm going to worry too much about these frame rails, but I did put a little in there. So that's it. So now I'm going to cut that piece of steel, get it flanged, and weld it in. It's all good. I got a patch made. Now I'm going to burn her in. Once I get it all burnt in, I put new flange and everything on. I brought it brand new right over to this piece. Uh, once I get it burnt in, I'll clamp it down on these flanges, clean up the red oxide that's under them, under the holes, and we'll get our spot welded down. And that'll be a strong fix. I was gonna do more up here, but this metal is strong, and I don't wanna do any more cutting in there than I have to. It's not an issue. All right, so let's get this done. Well, there she is, she's welded in. Now I'll grind her down and uh, make it look pretty. And that'll be one side done. That side over there, I'm going to wait until I get over there to work on it. So it's fine. I rush treated it. I haven't uh, uh, red oxide yet, as you can see. But once I get over working on that side, I'll deal with that. The car is no longer dependent on those mounts right now. They're on different mounts. So. All right, so let me get this ground down and we'll see how it looks. There she is, all welded in, ground up. Another treatment of uh, rust uh, converter on it, just to go over the whole thing. She's looking pretty good. I think that's as solid as it needs to be. There is a couple of pits here, but they're, they're solid. I'm not going to bother with them. They're treated with rust treatment. I'll move on. There'll be more than a few of those in this car before I'm done. And over here, like I said before, I rush treated all this, turned black really nicely. And I'll get this over here when I work on this side. But that's that part now I don't have to worry about. I'll, I still have to weld the underneath of this one. And I, as I showed, I welded all underneath this. So this is it. So now we can move ahead with uh, putting this panel back in back here. Getting this panel made. And uh, all that welded in. And once that's done, we can start working on the quarter panel again. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, it's, this video has actually gotten a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, 
for what had to be done there, but uh, quite a bit of hours put in it, just the same. But it's a rushed repair, and that's one more that I don't have to worry about for this old Thunderbird. So thanks a lot, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.